I'm Attorney General Ashley Moody with a warning about contact tracing scams. Health officials in Florida are calling people who may have been in contact with someone who tested positive for COVID-19. It's extremely important that they make contact with potentially infected individuals to help slow the spread of this deadly disease, making contact tracing vital to ending this pandemic. Sadly, scammers are mimicking these calls in an attempt to steal personal information. <laughs> if you receive a call from someone who claims to be a contact tracer, take steps to confirm that the call is in fact from your local health department. Know that a legitimate contact tracer will never ask for your birth date. They already have this information and will simply ask for confirmation. That's comforting. Contact tracers will never ask for your social security number or banking information. They have that too. They also will never reveal the identity of the COVID-19 positive person you may have had contact with. So what the fuck's the point? Finally, if a call seems suspicious, hang up. Look Get her for the out number of, here. of your local health department. Get her out of here. This is again an attack on entrepreneurs. People reaching out to other people to do business, to drive the economy. It's about commerce. And if people want to call people and 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 present and say, hey, you might have been in contact with somebody who had COVID-19, get a test, and then use it as a way to present them with a business opportunity. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And shame on the Attorney General of Florida. Shame on her. Shame on her for that anti-business attitude. Shame on her. How dare she? We all don't get checks from the government. We all don't get checks from Uncle Sam. Some of us need to go out in the streets and earn a living, bring home the bacon, rustle up a little cabbage. And what in what is she doing? She's discouraging men like myself. I got a list of names of Florida. I'm just going to call all of them and let them know they might have been in touch with somebody who has COVID-19. The fact that scammers are using the contact tracing uh, to, to try to scam people is just, it's, I know it's sad, but it is so funny that it's happening. Like, it's so funny to me that there, because I mean, pe we would have done that. We would have been like, hey, how are you? Hey, is this Miss Miller? Yes. Listen, it's never an easy call to make, but we just want to let you know that you may have been in contact with somebody who has tested positive for COVID-19. We have it on some good information that you've exposed yourself and your family to this potentially devastating disease. Have you taken a COVID-19 test? Well, good news is we can show up at the property with a COVID-19 test, you and the entire family, for, for seven easy payments of $69.99. Also, what rate are you paying on the mortgage? Mortgage rates have dropped precipitously due to the economic climate. Is there a way that we can help you streamline some of your debt and refinance that property in Florida while we're testing your family for COVID-19. I think that's the smartest thing to do. Am I wrong here, Mrs. Miller? I don't think I am. And then we would just show up. We'd show up, you know, drug the family. Yeah. Make her sign all these papers mm -hmm. and then light them on fire. And if that is not America, then I don't want to live here anymore. I don't want to live in a country where I cannot, first of all, if you're answering a contact tracing call, I don't know, maybe stop. Do you really feel better if it's the government going, hello, uh, it's the government. Uh, were you at your sister's house last Wednesday because there was a party and three people have COVID? And what contact tracing is too late. It's too late. I mean, you have it or you don't, I guess. Yep. Just wear the fucking mask. We could, it, it, all of this is to avoid the dumb mask. And, and the mask is only because you people want to leave your homes. So be very easy. Don't leave. Don't wear the mask. Mm -hmm. Don't go anywhere. Unless you have to go to work and then you, you have to wear the mask because you're at work. But it's this idea that you're like, oh, I want to go out. I don't want to wear the mask. And then we have all of these other things now where it's like, well, now we have contact tracing. And, you know, they're going to use that as they already have for protesters and everybody else. Mm -hmm. And you didn't pay your taxes last year. You said the word. Uh, you said an inappropriate word on Facebook. Now it's contact tracing. And. Wait, wait till that starts. Wait till social justice contact tracing starts. They start calling people up. Hi, you like to tweet uh, last Thursday? Is this Sharon? 
Is that Sharon? Did you tweet last Thursday, hey, Dr. Fauci, we know what you did with AIDS and you're not going to do it again? We're just trying to trace all the different people you've been in contact with, the different people that might hold those opinions. It's bad. I'm not answering a call from the government. I don't want I don't want anybody calling me. I don't want my friends and family calling me. I certainly I'm thinking about moving and it's just such a great boomer attitude. I was thinking about moving and uh, my father goes, it's closer to where he, I mean, he's in New York. I wouldn't be in California anymore. And uh, my father's whole thing, uh, of course, the perfect boomer response to me thinking about starting my new life. He goes, well, yeah, it would be easier for me to visit you because I wouldn't have to fly all the way to right. California. So again, thank you. Uh, thank you. Just a great way. They will always make it about themselves uh, as much as possible. You got to respect it. You almost have to respect it, truly, you know? And it would be easier to respect if that type of attitude uh, didn't destroy civilization uh, as it rapidly crumbles. Rapidly crumbling, DHS agents un. Uh, uh, going around Portland snatching people up, if you've seen this, a little disturbing. But, I mean, Portland's crazy. There's a lot of loonies running around there, but still uncomfortable with people getting thrown into vans by the government. But, again, we knew this was going to happen. Everybody, I mean, again, the most predictable thing ever. Um... They had barely made it up half a block when an unmarked minivan pulled up in front of them. I see guys in camo, four or five of them pop up, open the door, and it was just like, oh, shit. I don't know who you are or what you want with us. Federal law enforcement officers have been using unmarked vehicles to drive around downtown Portland and detain protesters since last Tuesday. Personal accounts and multiple videos posted online show the officers driving up to people, detaining individuals with no explanation about why they are being arrested and driving off. I mean, this is this was started after 9-11, this type of thing. We do not have to give you a reason as to why you are being detained. We can hold you indefinitely. This is exactly what... Uh, you know, people were afraid of. And of course, a lot of people are probably saying that these people are domestic terrorists and they were planning on committing acts of domestic terrorism. I don't know if that's true. It's certainly not impossible. The people in Portland are out of their fucking minds, some of them. So absolutely it's possible. But again, it's like we got to just take the government's word for it and we got to just show up in a van and throw people in a van. It just doesn't seem, this, this seems like, you know, it heads to a bad place. Is it just me? Is it just me or the camo guys throwing people in a van and driving off heads to a bad place? But what did I tell you in the beginning of this thing? I said the riots and the looting. What are they going to be used for? They're going to be used as a way for the government to take whatever few remaining rights you have. This is not new. This shouldn't be surprising. That's why I was like, protests are great. Nonviolent protests are great. The minute you use violence, the state turns around and will use violence as well. And so the logical thing there is if you think violence is going to work, you have to believe that you're going to beat the state. That you're going to actually drive the state, I mean, out of Portland. I mean, how long did Chaz last? Two weeks? They've got one by City Hall right now. Everybody's just hanging out doing drugs, discussing what the new government will be like, I, I, you know, after the city falls. It doesn't work. It doesn't work because the government's got the money and the power and the weaponry and machinery of death. They have the, I mean, we have a population, yeah, but but it's also like there's there's no loyalty that anybody in this country has to anybody else. We're, we're not a a group of people that agree on anything. We're not we're not going to be able to fashion a government. I mean, this is child stuff. I mean, this is like a crazy idea. The idea that we're going to like topple the government and then we're going to like every we're going to people are going to sit around a room and then decide what the new government's going to look like after we've burned the White House down. I mean, and I see people that should be more intelligent than this egging this on, pouring gasoline on this. And I keep wondering and asking them like, well, what is the plan here? What is the plan? We abolish the police, then enrich communities, private cops, ex-Mossad, ex-CIA, 
Fun folks. Less accountability than the cops have now. And in the poor communities, who will p fill that power vacuum? The mafia, gangs, criminal enterprises, because businesses, people are going to want safety and security, and so somehow they're going to get it. And the only way they'll get it is by pledging loyalty to a, a, some type of criminal enterprise. This is what happens when the police are gone and then the state no longer has a monopoly on violence and that everybody's using violence in his vigilante way as they see fit everybody else. This is the anarchy that uh, we fetishize on Twitter all the time. The same people that fetishize this type of anarchy get very scared when someone misgenders someone. They think that's violence. Wait till they find out what actual violence is. The same people that get scared that somebody doesn't use the right pronouns in a magazine or somebody has an argument that disagrees with them, feel perfectly comfortable with people marching through the streets, burning down uh, buildings. Thinking this is all going to go to some, I mean, it's fucking wild that these are adults. This is fucking nuts that we're having these conversations with it, I get drug addict, failed stand-up comedians who live on floors, but I, I'm I'm looking at actual adults, right. celebrities, people with money, thinking that somehow these mass violent insurrections in these cities lead to anything good. Is everyone nuts? This is like that thing went viral on Facebook, that guy Tom Foolery. Yes. We talked about it on the Patreon. He did that, he did that, um, he did that thing when the quarantine first started. Um, the like, you know, the bread making on Instagram was happening. Everybody was baking bread and everybody was talking about how the earth was healing and we were gonna emerge stronger than before. How did that, how did that work out? Are we stronger than before? Um, and then this guy, it went viral. This guy, Tom Fool, I don't even know who he is, but he's this British guy. And he, he can we play that on the show? No, we did it on the Patreon, though. We did it on the Patreon, we can't play it. But basically it was like a, a rhyme where he's reading a book to his son or a kid. Mm -hmm. And he's like, we built cities with buildings very tall, but we weren't listening to each other at all. And then he would do this whole thing about how like, you know, and then, you know, people got sick and we, we started listening. We started dancing. We started baking and take, and it was like, and it was just like this fucking crazy Pollyanna-ish view of like what would happen when you told the country they couldn't go to work tomorrow. Mm -hmm. They're like, everybody will start dancing in the street. And, talk. and yeah, that works for a week. And then all of a sudden uh, it starts to get pretty dark pretty quick. But I mean, I just don't understand. If somebody can explain to me, if somebody intelligent can explain to me how they think this all works, great. I'm open to list. I'm open to listening, okay? I'm open to it. I think Chrissy Teigen should lean in to being accountable <laughs> at this point because she's probably not, but all of Twitter, a lot of Twitter thinks she is. So just lean into it. And have John Legend get out and be like, we're just ordinary cannibals. <laughs> and sit on the fucking piano while he does it. Who cares? Chrissy Teigen's just a hot chick. Listen, the QAnon people, I, I, all I try to do is help you people. I really do. All I, many of you are schizophrenic. Many of you are schizophrenic. Many of you have a few of the right ideas and a lot of the wrong ones. Mm -hmm. And that's a potent combination and it's quite bad. It's quite bad to have some of the right ideas and some of the wrong ones and just go confidently with that. <laughs> Not good. So, Chris Teigen, I don't even know who the, she's like a model who married John Legend. She's on social media all the time and she's a hot chick who just, can't, the biggest problems in life, listen to me now, you see how I did that with my voice? That means I'm going to a philosopher mode. The biggest problems in life are people that can't be who they are. Rich people that can't just be rich and try to be like clowns. You look at them with pity 
and you look on in horror. I've seen rich people on stage like trying to do it and there's nothing sadder than watching a rich person fail at trying to be a clown. There's nothing worse than a hot chick trying to be funny and relevant and interesting if you don't have to be. She's a hot chick who's addicted to herself. All she does is post fucking every, she deleted 60,000 tweets. I mean, the woman's tweeted like so many fucking times. It'll just be like, it could be I'm eating a taco. She can't handle people not looking at her for five minutes. She doesn't have time to be a satanic pedophile. She's on Twitter all day. So here's the thing. She tweeted things about that show Toddlers and Tiaras. And some of them are weird and some of them are creepy. She tweeted some things about pizza or whatever. Nobody knew before Pizzagate, people just liked pizza. They didn't know. Um, I don't like Chrissy Teigen. I don't think she's funny. I think she's annoying. Uh, I don't like that she judged a comedy competition on um, NBC. There's nothing funny about her, and, and I don't know why the hell I'm going to jail over pizza. I mean, what was that, 2013? I mean, yeah. she. well, it, that didn't age well. Didn't age well. <laughs> didn't age well. But she didn't know. Or she did. I don't know. I don't know her. Okay, I don't like. I'm not like hanging out with her and John Legend, but I don't think they're eating children. I don't think her and John Legend. If she was a cannibal, it would be the most interesting thing about her. How much more interesting would this bitch be if she was eating children? Which I'm against. But again, just on the fucking what makes people interesting. If somebody said, you know that hot bitch. Chrissy Teigen, who's for some reason hosting a comedy show on NBC, judging it, telling people who's funny and who's not funny. Well, and she has a cookware line. And I'm like, yes. Yeah. And they would go, she's also a fucking cannibal. And I'm like, really? Really? But I don't think she is. She's just trying to be funny. And when people that don't have any perspective try to be funny... They just say things that are outlandish. She's just a hot girl trying to get attention, okay? So when she's talking about eating human flesh, I would love to taste with a human. It's just when hot chicks talk, guys just laugh at whatever they say. Anyone, Chrissy Teigen her entire life, when she said something like, I just want to eat people, guys would be like, oh, yeah, you're, you're cool. Yeah, people, you're fucking wild. If I said, I want to eat people, someone goes and calls the police, so there's a difference between me and Chrissy Teigen and how people respond to what we say. She's never had to be accountable for any word that's ever come out of her mouth. She just hasn't because she's gotten that hot chick. We're just ordinary cannibals. What a great song, though. Why not do that? He's just playing in the piano. Yeah, yeah. We're just ordinary cannibals. We just want to eat our fill. Just maybe lean into it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think she's eating chill. Why do we, why do the kids have, why is sexual abuse not enough for the QAnon people? Why is it not enough that the kids are being sexually abused? That is heinous, horrific, should be like punishable by death. Why is that not enough? Why do they have to be eating the children? I don't understand why this has to be a Hansel and Gretel fairy tale for anyone to care about this. Is what Epstein and Ghislaine doing was that, somehow better because they weren't barbecuing the girls after? I don't understand. Do you have to bring out a human-sized rotisserie for people to care about children? It's very strange. Very strange to me. This obsession with the celebrities being cannibals. I think if you just have a very shitty life or you're bored and your life's actually pretty good, but you're bored, you just start thinking that everybody who's achieved any level of success eats people. I don't know what breaks in your mind. I don't know what happens. Is Chrissy Teigen in the Illuminati? How embarrassing is it if this bitch is the thing that you all think? Like, can you imagine, doesn't that bother some of you? That it's this woman a woman who gets in cookware feuds with other with the food bloggers. But I think she should probably get off Twitter or take a little break, Chrissy. You're not built for it. Relax. She's big on Twitter. I, I subtweeted her once and said something, and people are like, whoa, don't fuck around with Chrissy. 
They said, she'll get you thrown right off Twitter. And I said, why? I said, I'm just an ordinary cannibal. I feel bad for people that uh, are suffering from mental illness. I want to say that. And I think there's a lot of people in this country uh, all over the place that this quarantine has exacerbated mental illness, including many of my friends and family members and a lot of people of my colleagues seem, seem to be uh, slipping and losing their mind, okay? Very sad. R.I.P. to Brian Callen and Brendan Schaub, who both died this morning of coronavirus. Very sad. They fought till the end. They fought till the end. And I respect that. I respect that. <laughs> I just want to scream about ordinary cat. I started watching this show. Uh, Devin and Ida came over. We did the Patreon. And uh, I started watching this show, My Big Fat American Gypsy Wedding. I've become fascinated with gypsies. And I think everyone should get a, a hobby during quarantine. I really do. I think you should get a hobby. Do something. Better yourself. I've chosen gypsies. You can choose losing weight, writing a novel. I have chosen the Romani people. That is what I want to... And, and listen, to any of them listening, don't curse me. Stop right there. Because I am afraid of that. I'm going to talk about this very respectfully. I don't want any of the curses. I don't think they run anything else, so I don't really have to worry about them denying me, you know, a spot on Tournament of Laughs 2. But, I, you know, no, if the curses are legit, none of that. I don't want any of it. They're, obviously, the gypsies, they've been travelers forever. A lot of people think they're thieves. I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. I, who am I to... You make a little business here. It doesn't work out. You get in the caravan, go to the next town. What am I? Hey, what am I? I don't have anything to say about that. But they love like gaudy, over the top uh, dresses and bling. And, 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 and they have these weddings that are wild. And these women show up in these fucking, you know, truly heinous, don't curse me, heinous grotesque outfits. I mean, thing, can we show screenshots? Just Google Sandra Celli, who's the designer of these outfits. This, this woman who's not a gypsy, but makes her living selling these people uh, dresses to wear to weddings. And I mean, dresses that like, look at, look at these. I mean, I mean, you'd have to be on crack <laughs> to walk down an aisle in that. But they love it, and they're and and a lot of them marry like their first cousin. A lot of them do, and I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Don't curse me. I just want you to be happy, and they're very open about that. I'm not saying now is that then there's the charge of it gets a little inbred if you're marrying your first cousin, and 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 hey, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. But I, I, it's just such a great show. It's just such a phenomenal show. TLC just finds groups of people and just everything on TLC is just, you find people whose lives have been destroyed. My 600 pound life, yeah. my strange addiction. I mean, TLC has a room of executives basically going like, let's find a bitch who's addicted to eating a couch. Let's find somebody who's addicted to eating glass. And it's destroying the lining of her stomach and her esophagus. And let's put her on. And let's put her on camera. And then they found these small groups of American gypsies. And they have weddings and they get in these feuds and they beat the shit out of each other. And uh, I just, I, you know, I thought somebody told me about this show and I thought I'd watch it for like a few minutes. I ended up watching just at least a YouTube clip after YouTube clip after YouTube. But they are fun. They seem fun. I don't know if they're the brightest, but they seem fun people. Like they're they're happier than anyone I know. And many of them don't have much, but they're happier than anyone I know. So maybe they figured it out. I don't know. I'm being very careful here because I don't know if or I believe in the curse or not. Do you believe in the gypsy curse? You're a fucking Texas. You come out of a deeply conservative Christian church. You believe in all this shit. I mean, where do you stand? Uh, can gypsies curse people? I think so. I'm superstitious, aren't you? Like, do you do you see omens and stuff? Or like, I don't want to start problems here. That's all I'm There's trying to 10 say. Ten million of them, right? Ten million gypsies. I don't know how many there are of them. 
I'm just saying, I respect your culture. I want to get this guy, Pat Baby, on the show, whose daughter, Priscilla, is a professional uh, wrestler. Mm -hmm. I'm I, the culture is fascinating to me. I don't love the dresses, but I'm not gonna get married in a wedding dress. So it's, I mean, these wedding dresses at first, I mean, when you look at them, they're horrific. They're almost scary. Let me find that Snow White one. Yeah, they're almost they're kind of terrifying, and a lot of these weddings are in fields. If you are a gypsy fan of the show, please reach out to me and let's start a dialogue about how I can kind of understand and learn more about the gypsy culture. Yeah, I mean, look at that. I mean, it's just, it's kind of, it's a little disturbing. It lights up too at night. It also lights up, yeah. But they love the bling and the rhyme. So, I mean, so if you're a fan of the show... And you're a Ramachal, Ramnachal, gypsy. I don't really want the Irish traveler variety. No offense. But I kind of want the real deal Ramnachal. Yeah. If you are a fan of the show and you're a Ramnachal gypsy, and that's possible, correct? Please respectfully, without cursing me, reach out because I'm just very interested in the culture. I just, all I want to watch is gypsies now. I mean, it's crazy. I just want to watch gypsies. I just watch gypsy weddings, gypsy balls. I don't, I don't know what's happening to me, but I don't want to consume any other content at the moment except gypsies. There's something about it that I enjoy. I think of myself kind of like a traveler. I'm a nomadic person to a degree. Am I not? You are. I've been persecuted throughout history for being correct about everything. <laughs> why Why do I not get to, you know what I mean? They're, they're happy people. They're, they're interesting people. Are they inbred? That's a, that's a fair question that I, I am not weighing in on in any way. It's a question that I am asking. Because the fir is if you marry your first cousin, what is that? It's, it's incest. Yeah. But but you know, <laughs> let's not come down on it hard, too hard on the show. Let's just let it out as like, uh, I think Chrissy Teigen's the real problem. <laughs> and but you know, I don't know. It seems a little. It seems a little sus. I don't have a hot first cousin. I can't relate. Um, but there's a look that a lot of these people have. There is a look of that there's something going. There's maybe something a little off. Mm -hmm. Not all of them. I haven't seen all of them, but certainly the ones on the show. Some are pretty. Uh, no, <laughs> yeah, not. It's in, in, in unique. There's an interesting mm -hmm. quality there. But I'm... I'm actually just fascinated by the culture. I've only seen the gypsies on the show. I don't know gypsies in real life. I'm not trying to discriminate against them. I, I've, I understand that all kinds of people have all kinds of issues out there. I don't, I, a cousin marriage is not even in the, any of, in the top hundred problems in America. And it, it's not even a problem. Do your thing. Um, it's, it's an interesting culture. The, 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 the dresses are a little strange. Um, and they beat, they beat the shit out of each other at a lot of these parties. Like, cause they don't like when a gypsy marries a non-gypsy it's called a gorger. So the non-gypsy is called the gorgers. And then there's the gypsies. I don't know what it is. I'm just saying, well, we're not going to talk about this for the whole episode. Cause I don't need, I don't need a fucking old woman coming over here and fucking, I don't know, handing me a monkey's paw and cursing <laughs> me. And maybe that doesn't happen. I don't know. But I, so here's what I will say. If you are a gypsy and you want to like, you want to get involved with some contact tracing call scams, I would get involved with you. I would fly to Florida and set up a call center right now with gypsies, yeah. with gypsies. Listen to call people that, and say that they've been exposed to coronavirus and then get their information. Just throwing it out there. 
But other than that, I will just continue to watch every episode of this show, the UK and the American version that I can, because it is truly the only thing that is making me happy. I mean, it's truly the only thing that is me I don't know why watching two women in brightly colored dresses beat the shit out of each other in a field makes me happy, but right now it is. It's hitting the spot. It's just hitting the goddamn spot. We all got to find moments of levity. We all got to find things. I'm enjoying learning about different cultures. Isn't that the point of life? Learning about different cultures? That's what I'm doing on this show. That's why I watch My Big Fat American Gypsy Wedding. To learn about different people and their way of life. So if you're a Ron Michelle Gypsy, not a traveler. I'm kidding. If you're an Irish traveler, please message me on Instagram. And now many of you are going to lie because everyone always lies when I say message me and they lie and I know you lie and I said, are you in a secret society? And then you losers like, yes, I'm in Skull and Bones. We know you're not. Get your dick suck. Get your dick suck. Get your dick suck. It's the apocalypse. This episode of the Tim Dillon Show is sponsored by Blue Chew. Remember the days when you could always go. Remember the days when you had a job and a family and life and you could go places. Remember the days when everybody wasn't your enemy, a vector of disease. Remember those days. Remember the days when you could gather in public. Remember those days when you could hug people and touch them where you could lean on a surface without having to put hand sanitizer all over yourself. You had to rub yourself with ethyl alcohol every five minutes. You smell like a distillery going down the block. Remember those days before the race riots and the war and the looting and the famine and the children screaming out in the street? Remember those days? Remember those days when your cock was hard? Blue Chew brings you the first chewable with the same FDA-approved ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. You can take them anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach, since they're chewable, hence the name. They work up to twice as fast as a pill, so you can be ready whenever an opportunity arises. If you could benefit from more confidence where it counts, Blue Chew is fast and easy way to enhance your performance. Blue Chew is prescribed online by licensed physicians, so you don't have to go to the doctor's office or wait in line at the pharmacy, and it ships right to your door in a discreet package. So if you like a harder dick and you have a little erectile dysfunction, which everybody has, and if you don't, you're just crazy because people, you know, I mean, you got to be struggling right now with many different things. So I'm sure that uh, some of that ends up hurting your performance. And they're made in the USA. Born in the USA. My dick pills in the USA. <laughs> My brother can't get a hard cock. <laughs> He jerks off to porn in a sock. <laughs> he's on 4chan. He, he's an incel. Finally, he met a woman and he doesn't know what to do. Take the blue chew. It's made in the USA. Blue chew in the USA. Blue chew in the USA. Blue chew in the USA. Right now, we have a, a special deal for our listeners. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free. Wow. When you order special uh, promo code TIM. Hold on, I'm getting a phone call right now. Hello? Hi, Tim. This is Dustin calling from Ocean Prime in Beverly Hills. Hi, Dustin. How are you? Good. How are you? I just have a question really quick. So the gift card you're telling me about, it's an Ocean Prime gift card, right? It is. Yes. It is? Okay. Uh, yeah, I just need to double check. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Bye. I mean, are these people, has everyone had their <laughs> brain eaten? B-L-U-E, chew.com, promo code T-I-M to try it free. All you pay is $5 shipping. So this is a great opportunity to try out uh, a nice little enhancement pill and a nice hard penis, and it's truly great. Blue Chew is the better, cheaper, faster choice. We thank them if you like the show and you want, um, you know, he was drunk in a bar last night. He wanted to fuck and not fight. But he brought a waitress home and he took his pants down. And she looked at that mush and she started to frown. Blue Chew in the USA. Blue Chew in the USA. His dick looked like a pencil. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, that's B L U E Chew.com, promo code Tim, to try it free. B L U C H E W Chew.com, promo code Tim, to try it free. Thank you. Folks, Nate Bergman is back. He's making his first solo music that's already been described by Classic Rock Magazine as Otis Redding Cross with Bruce Springsteen. And make and that's because he does blackface. Uh, <laughs> making instantly likable uh, tunes that hold their own. <laughs> the British press, Metal Hammer UK, says Bergman is one of the most unique original voices in modern music. And Distorted Sound describes his first solo show in London as a draw-dropping performance. American songwriter says he's painfully honest, witty lyrics that are delivered through powerhouse vocals. So Nate Bergman was in a band called Lion Eyes. They were successful. He's a fan of the show. He's been a listener for a long time. He's made music. He's taken things we've said and made some beautiful songs about them. Um, and we're plugging his Patreon here, okay? Music is being offered exclusively through Patreon at patreon.com slash Nate Bergman Sings, N-A-T-E-B-R-E-B-E-R-G-M-A-N, Nate Bergman Sings, N-A-T-E-B-E-R-G-M-A-N, Nate Bergman Sings for just $5 a month. The Patreon features exclusive studio songs, live streams, guitar tutorials, and weekly stories about life from inside the music industry and stories from 18 years on tour. So if you're into guitar and you want to learn how to play guitar with an actual musician who's a fun guy that does this for a living, Nate Bergman sings. He's on Twitter. He's on Instagram. You can follow this guy. We just played his song on the show. Okay? So if you like his music, and even if you don't, you just want to help me. Then follow him on Twitter or follow him on Instagram so he doesn't so he doesn't think this is a waste of money. You know, uh, be a fan of his. He's very talented. You should be a fan of his. For fans of Neil Young, Pink Pink Floyd, Jason Isbell, Black Crows, Bruce Springsteen, Tom Petty, Nate is a Rothschild member of the Patreon and has been a fan and supporter for many years. The song "Middle of the End" was inspired by the episode of the Tim Dillon Show with Ray Kump. That song and Living on the Line are available now only on Patreon. So we're a big supporter of independent creators that go out and put their music out there and they try to self-finance everything. Bergman is a cool dude. Uh, his website is natebergmansings.com. It's through Wix when they were a sponsor. We appreciate mm -hmm. that. N-A-T-E-B-E-R-G-M-A-N sings.com. Okay, I really like uh, a lot of his music, and and I and I'm sure I'd like a lot more of it if I've heard it. Um, you know, you should get into music. It might be a time to learn how to play guitar on Patreon. Why not hit the guy up and say, "Hey, I want to play guitar." Maybe you're sick of hitting your wife. Maybe she's got the message, you know, mm -hmm. and maybe you want to. And the kids have gotten the message, and they're all cowering in a corner crying, and you want to learn how to play the guitar. Might be a good thing to put your hands on instead of your woman. Gays also beat each other up. That People don't think that, but gays really beat each other up a lot. I don't beat anyone up. I'm just saying people, people in gay relationships hit each other. Again, Nate Bergman is a singer and uh, should be respected. Uh, and if you enjoy what he does, follow him on Patreon. You know, I mean, he puts himself out there. We appreciate it. Um... And, uh, you know, just so follow him on Twitter, Instagram, go to his Patreon if you're into it. If you want to learn how to play guitar, listen to his music. Um, you know, this is the future for artists, and uh, we're, uh, we're happy that he chooses to, you know, put his stuff here. You know, and I, I disagreed with when he did blackface and dressed up as Otis Redding. I thought that was a bad move. Um, you know, but he chose to do it. He chose to do it, and uh, he lives with that for the rest of his life. We're kidding, of course. He's, he's not done that that I know of, but who knows? Nate Bergman, support him, patreon.com slash Nate Bergman sings. Accused, by the way, I was accused, and I won't say the name, but I was accused on Twitter by an ex-Daily Show writer of using coded language. Very disappointing. Very disappointing. <laughs> Truly disappointing. This woman, who I've been nice to, and like tweeted out things she's done, because I think she has some talent writing, said like, hey, you always seem like you're dancing around what you want to say, 
Um, let it out. We're all friends here. I think all of these people, if you try to have a nuanced point, they all think we're sitting in a room saying, Heil Hitler. I don't know what's wrong with this woman, but this woman has a cooking show, and I watched that, and she made three Hitler jokes in the first minute. Yeah. So who's obsessed with Hitler? <laughs> Maybe it's you. I made a point, and I made the point on the show where I said that people that are, you know, very, very uncomfortable and feel unsafe when people use language they don't like or make points they disagree with seem to not mind. They feel very safe when you just have anarchy and chaos and violence in the street. So I was like, that seems like a very interesting setup for a human being psyche to have. Getting triggered and feeling unsafe with language, but not really minding the fire and the uh, gunshots and the violence. And then this woman was like, well, what do you, what do you really want to say? What did she think I was going to tweet back? Oh, right. I'm sorry. Heil Hitler. That's what I meant to say. I was making a nuanced point about people weaponizing the word unsafe to just basically shut down conversations by saying they feel unsafe. And you rightly noticed that and called me out because what I was really saying is Heil Hitler. Thank you so much for pointing that out. And I said there, I said, I have... I have a lot of podcasts. You can listen to all of them. My words are very accessible. They're also my own. And I said to her, you made a living in a major corporation that vetted everything you said. Everything you said went through standards and practices, went through ad sales, went through legal. It got vetted. It got vetted to make sure that it was okay because fucking corporate sponsors were sticking ads in the middle of it. Okay? I'm allowed to say what the fuck I want. And I say that for now, by the way, for now. Uh, I say that. And uh, so all my words are pretty accessible, and they're my own. They didn't go through legal and standards and practices. And then she doesn't respond, of course, because these, these people just want to drive the car, they want to throw the rock, and they want to keep going. Mm. That's what they want to do. I pick up the rock, I throw it back. By the time I've thrown it back, the car is in the next town, like the gypsies. <laughs> and I loved, I love gypsy. Don't waste a curse on me when Chrissy Teigen's barbecuing kids. We just... All right. <laughs> I can't believe I have to defend Chrissy Teigen. 2020, fuck you. I don't want to defend Chrissy Teigen. I hate her. But I just don't think she's eating children. I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on the... But maybe, I don't know. I mean, in two months, if it comes out, she's eating children. I want to also make a disclaimer here. This is how fucked things are that I have to now make a disclaimer that if Chrissy Teigen is busted for eating children, I did not know and I'm not defending her. I'm basically saying the evidence presented at this point has not convinced me that Chrissy Teigen is a satanic uh, pedophile cannibal. That being said, if new evidence comes, I may revise my estimate. I don't know. I'm spending all my money right now trying to get Ghislaine Maxwell out of prison because she's been wrongly accused. This is a powerful, strong woman. She's a fierce advocate of women's independence and liberation. The idea that she's behind bars right now is a fucking tragedy. It is a travesty. It is disgusting, and I think we should get her out of jail. Ghislaine Maxwell did buy an ad this week on the show. She did buy an ad this week on the show. And she it was it was a lot of fucking money. We usually don't sell ads for this much money, but it was an ad, and it was it's an ad for uh her being released from prison. And uh so we do have to do the ad, and this is just essentially the ad. Is it just Lane Maxwell wants to say hello to the whole uh, Tim Dillon show fan base and audience. She thinks that there's a lot of rumors floating around there about her, but they're easily corrected, and uh she will be giving up some very big names. How great would it be if, if Ghislaine Maxwell's like they put her on the stand finally whenever this trial happens? Mm -hmm. It won't, by the way, probably. But whenever it happens, she's like sitting there. She's like, listen, love, it's all Chrissy Teigen. We was working for Chrissy Teigen, love. Me and Jeffrey wasn't doing nothing. We was afraid of Chrissy Teigen. How great would it be if just Ghislaine just outs Chrissy Teigen as the leader she is the leader. I went, I had lunch at the Yard House 
in Rancho Mirage, the Yard House, which is, uh, you know, people know I love a corporate steakhouse. They know that. But uh, I also, you know, every now and then just a chain corporate lunch spot where they do things like tuna ahi, tuna pokey nachos, and a nice crab cake sandwich with a jalapeno tartar, some truffle fries. You never leave mad. You never leave those places mad. Let's be honest. You never leave that kind of outdoor mall chain lunch spot you know, whatever it is, mad, you know, like a little upmarket, not an Applebee's per se, but like a place with just a little bit more. I don't like the term gastro pub. I've been highly critical of gastro pubs. I think many of them suck, but I think some of them, if done right, and some of, and it's rare that it's really done right. But some of these like craft brew houses, all this bullshit, they just have good food. So there's a shout out to uh, the Yard House in Rancho Mirage with the ahi uh, tuna pokey nachos and the crab cake sandwich. Phenomenal. Uh, sadly, Dickie's Barbecue Pit in uh, Rancho Mirage still running a human trafficking ring. So if the victimization of children bothers you, go over and show Dickie's how you feel about it. However you want to handle it, just handle it. It's not my, it's not my business. But when you take a Postmates order, when you have fucking eight minutes and then you fucking call back and go, we're closed, it's like, you're not closed. I ordered it eight minutes ago. I'm just, I'm a little, I support the American worker and I have always. It's something that I believe in. But I'm also getting very angry at the people in in drugstores that are now using COVID as a reason to not just show you where the, the eardrops are. Like they just, they just, they point in a general direction. They go, they're over there. I'll say, it's like, just show me where it is. Walk me to the eardrop, point at it and then leave. And I'll pick it up. I just think that COVID in general is really bringing out the worst in everybody, including many of the people that I have to deal with on a day-to-day basis. You know, and I'm just wondering how should we handle this kind of level of insubordination or this new like attitude that a lot of people have? Do we withhold a vaccine from the people that are not performing? I I mean, it's a question. I mean, do we withhold uh, treatment from the people that are not performing? You know, I mean, is this the way to do it? Because I think there's just a lot of there's a lot of tood now. There's a lot of tood And it's like uncalled for and unnecessary. I know you're miserable and you don't want to be there. And, you know, you're being exposed to a deadly virus. And I get all of that. But, like, here's the reality. I I don't want the dude. I don't want the dude. I was all like Sanders, working people, Mm -hmm. support. But then I'm like, I need an eardrop because I got water in my inner ear from the pool, which is not as big as I'd like. But I, it's in my inner ear now, and that will cause an infection. Where are the drops? And it just point to aisle seven and go, yeah, aisle seven, and then walk away. It's like, what is this? Where's the pride? Ride Aid in Palm Desert. Where is the pride? No, truly. It just bothers me. I, 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 I just think... That if people at certain jobs knew that they would not be vaccinated unless their performance was better, they would rise to the occasion, yes or yes. Yes or yes. It's a question. I'm just throwing it out there. How do we mandate performance now? I don't know, but I'm saying I think maybe it's time to kind of make people understand that there are stakes when I had that crab, that's a fat crab cake at the yard house with the jalapeno tartar. And the pokey nachos were nice. They were a little light on the ahi. They were a little light. But that's okay because I understand that we're at, we're at reduced capacity. We're on only outdoor seating. I get it. You're trying to make a buck. I understand that. It's funny when you're out in the desert, you always know, say like it's hot and all the locals are like, Pfft. it could be like 116 degrees and yeah. you'll be like, it's hot. And they're like, Ugh, this is nothing. It's like, how hot does it get? What do you mean this is nothing? People love to say that. Like, locals love to say it. They're like, you don't know what hot is. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, I, it's, 116 degrees is hot. That's hot. Oh, you don't understand. You don't understand how bad things are. But shout out to that restaurant. You know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's tough now to work in the restaurant business. It's very, very difficult. And I've only eaten outside. We've eaten outside at a few places. And my heart goes out to people in that industry because, listen, it's an industry I'd love to get into. If, if, if I was successful at podcasting and a comedy, 
um, more so than I am now, and I could save some money. I'd invest it into a restaurant. I love that business, and I would like to have a restaurant. And I'd like to have like a neighborhoody, casual, like a high end upscale cafe. I've talked about it on the Patreon, and um, so when I when I am at a restaurant and I see servers behaving in a way that just isn't isn't you know doesn't really. Uh, you know, put the institution in a good light. I want, I want to take away their vaccines and I want to, and I, I, I want to make them, I want to make them understand that that can happen. And I just want to know how we can do that as a country uh, to go to people uh, to the essential. Well, these are the essential workers, essentially the people, the right, right aids and the Walgreens and the nurses don't get me started on them. But I don't think, I don't think the essential workers should be vaccinated if they're not the, if the, rev I want a peer review. I want to peer review. Like, I want to know that that they're they're behaving. Like the other day, I ordered Postmates, and the guy just opens the garage and leaves it by the garage door, and it's it's like baking in the sun for an hour. And I'm yelling at Postmates. He doesn't knock on the door. He doesn't open the door. He sees that how he goes in a garage and leaves it in the fucking garage. Like, should that guy be inoculated against this disease? No, no. I just, I'm just saying, I think a lot of it had to do with calling people heroes early on, calling them essential workers. I think people got a little bit of an attitude. I think people got, got a little bit of a chip on their shoulder when they heard they were essential. And that people like myself were somehow not essential. The commentators, the people who speak, the people who talk, the people who speak on behalf of the people, the voice of the voiceless, I'm not essential. But some clown is at Trader Joe's, and I think not. I think not, sir. Sir, I think not, ma'am non-binary Trader Joe's employee. I don't believe uh, that you are essential. And I think we just, there was a little chip on the shoulder. And I'm not, I am not blind to the sacrifices that a lot of those people have made. But what I am saying is that there needs to be a standard of quality delivered in every interaction, no matter what. In the midst of rioting, in the midst of looting, in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of an economic collapse, in the midst of a political crisis, in the midst of a crisis in confidence in government, in the midst of an escalation of a Cold War, hopefully not a hot war with China, in the midst of all of those things, I still fucking think you get off your fat ass and you show someone where the eardrops are. That's what I think. And if you don't do that, you don't get vaccinated. We made a sketch for TBS this week that is so ridiculous, uh, so embarrassing. Um, and we did it because we are actually daring them to put it on television. <laughs> I cannot believe we made the sketch we made. We have all the footage, right? Yeah, we do. We're going to cut together the sketch... Uh, we give all them the raw footage and they cut it together. The last catch we gave them, they completely butchered it and they removed all context and it didn't make any sense. If you'd seen the last catch was me and Devin, we're sitting at a table. It's obviously two guys that are having dinner. It's like, you know, with everything else going on, we're looking at our phones, you mm -hmm. hear screams and everything. They took all that part out. They took like the context out. You didn't realize we were at a restaurant. I mean, the whole thing was crazy. Um, again, the editors at the editors at TBS were drawing a salary somehow to edit Content. Uh, but the new sketch we gave them is so patently ridiculous, so absurd. Truly, it shows how little respect we have for the entire show, the entire institution of television, mm -hmm. specifically basic cable. But, I mean, it is so... I mean, it is almost... The idea of it being on TV just makes me laugh. I mean, have we ever made anything that no, crazy? It was like Freddie got fingered, but, like made less sense. It doesn't make any sense. Somehow, imagine if they like make it make sense somehow. <laughs> right. Every every sketch we've given them has made sense and they've made it not make sense by their editing decisions. Um, and you could vote for, vote for us at what? Tournament of Laughs or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know. Let me give the link out now if you want to vote. And by the way, I don't care what you do. I don't care if you vote or not. I just want to watch Gypsies... Uh, get married over and over again uh, and, and get the Postmates orders I order on time. That's really all I want to do until I die. And and the way things are going, that's probably all I will do. Who's left in the contest? Do we even know? Who do we got left? 
So we're, we don't know if we're in round three yet. Or no, we are in round three, right? So that's the Elite Eight. I don't know if we're allowed to say that, that we're in round three. We didn't say it. What are they going to do? <laughs> Sue us? Kick us off the show? Thanks. They sent me a promo the other day to put up, and I go, I'm not in the promo. They go, they go, well, everybody in the show is not in the promo. I'm like, well, why am I sharing it if I'm not in it? My fans are going to think I'm sharing another fucking show that they don't want to watch <laughs> if I'm not in it. How fucking dense are you people? How have these people made money? Soon they won't. Soon I think this, this industry is going to take a big haircut. And a lot of people that previously had jobs in it will not have jobs. And, 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 and very few of them should currently have jobs. Um, but we don't know who's left. How do they vote for us? At the TBS Tournament of Laughs website. If you type in Tournament of Laughs into Google, it'll take you on the first link. If you go to the TBS Tournament of Laughs uh, website, tbs.coms and then shows Tournament of Laughs, they will allow you to vote for me and Ben to continue advancing in this contest. And I mean, so when is the sketch that we made? I mean, this abomination. It is funny, but it's like an abomination. So that's if we make it to round four. If round we make three it, sketch is airing Sunday, I think. So round three sketch will air Sunday, which is what? That we can't say. I, we can't say. All right. But You've it's seen it before. Made, yeah. You've seen it before. Round four of Tournament of Laughs is is the abomination. Yeah. If the if it happens. Yeah. And if it doesn't happen, we will release the abomination on this show. We're going to put all the footage out mm -hmm. of what we filmed. And then I guess you will all see why it did not make it on TV. But it might. We might win and then they have to figure out something to do with it. Why we're sending it in like this so crazy is that we want them to stare at this and be puzzled and not understand what's happening and then have to somehow edit it into something mm. that can make sense on television. Which, I mean, of all the things we've made, this is like by far the most ridiculous. Yeah, and round five, if we make it to round five, you think we should do something even weirder? If we make it to round five, this is the plan for the rest of the show. We're just going to do things that are so insane and so absurd, and they, they're they going to make less and less sense. <laughs> that, like, I think, what's the final round? One, two, three. I think round six. Or so if round six is the final round. Or five, maybe. Yeah. If round five or six, whatever it is, the final round, I think it should just be, like, me sitting on a, in a bathtub eating my own shit. And then just, like... Ben like screaming <laughs> in another language off camera. And then like we submit this and when they call us, they go, uh, we're just having a problem. I go, what do you mean? Like sitting in a bathtub smeared with my own shit, fake shit. And then just eating like <laughs> fake shit. And then Ben like in another language, being like, hi, dad, and dad, and dad, and dad. And like, like five, like three minutes of it. I think it has to be like a five minutes. No, it'd be five minutes of that. And there's guy hi, da, da, like just <laughs> screaming like Indian death chants or you know like Tibetan whatever <laughs> prayer you know and then I'm just like eating my own shit and then I just stand up and I go like like we we want to make something that is so disrespectful that we'll never work <laughs> in this business again because we're bored I'm bored so we just want to we just want to get a call from the executives at TBS. Now the problem is, the dumbest thing we make, the executives will probably call us up and go, this is great. <laughs> they turn it into a show. This is actually great. Shit tub on TBS. <laughs> and they're like, we love the idea of you sitting in a tub eating your own shit. Can you do this? Could you do this every week? Can like diverse other cast members sit and eat shit with you? Mm -hmm. That's the problem now. It's like the producers where they made that, you know, made that musical that ended up making a lot of money. Do you know what my favorite cereal was a kid was? What? Lucky Charms. Mm. Do you know why? Why? Because it tasted like sugar. And I love sugar because I was from a bad family. Mm -hmm. And Many kids are getting addicted to sugar, and it is unfortunate. Many people have a, have a crippling addiction in this country to sugar. 
but I've lost 700 pounds in the last year. And do you know how I've done that? No. I started eating a cereal called Magic Spoon. When I started this year, I was 1,000 pounds. And now I'm down to a svelte around 300. Probably under. We don't know. But it's all been because of Magic Spoon cereal because every time I want a cocoa fruity frosted snack, instead of going out and face fucking myself <laughs> with every available option of food, what I do is I go and I eat some Magic Spoon. And you can get it by going to magicspoon.com slash Tim Dillon to grab a variety pack of this zero sugar. Are you ready for this? Wake the fuck up. Zero sugar, 12 grams of protein, and only three net grams of carbs in each serving. What's your favorite cereal? The fruity one no, from Magic Spoon. No, I'm, don't be a fucking chill for a minute. I'm oh. trying to have a conversation with you. What's your actual favorite cereal? I like Smacks. Smacks, the one with the frog. Yeah, yeah. God, you are a Nazi. <laughs> Smacks has killed several people. It's true. You know that? You Is never that heard true? that, the Smacks stroke? No, no. People have a stroke in the middle of eating it, and they go, <laughs> and they drop to the floor. Ray Comp spoke regular until he was eating Smacks. Smacks is not that good, dude. I like it. I mean, it's really not that good. I mean, I haven't had it in 15 People years. People think I'm abusive to you, but this is why <laughs> I'm abusive to him, because he says retarded things. He says stupid things, not retarded. You know what I mean. I don't want to offend anybody out there, especially retards. <laughs> this is a keto- <laughs> This is a keto-friendly cereal. It's gluten-free. It's grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, GMO-free. You've got to try Magic Spoon to believe it because it tastes amazing. Um, you know, I was a, I love Golden Grams. I love Lucky Charms. I love Pops. I love uh, I love uh, Honey Nut Cheerios, King shit, Honey Nut Cheerios. Mm. Uh, I didn't mind the fucking, you know, uh, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Yeah. Maybe a little Waffle Crisp here and there. But then you were starting to get a little too ridiculous when you got into that, you know. Um but I'll tell you this. When I eat Magic Spoon, I feel like I'm a kid again. Yeah. I feel like I'm a child again. I feel like I'm stealing cigarettes from my friend's mother and smoking them in a place we called Oil City. I feel like I'm taking a, a drive with a guy named Hector and Sonia who are not a couple, but we're fucking. And then later he found out she had a family. I feel like we're taking that car into South Jamaica, Queens to get cocaine from a guy named Albert. Uh, I feel like a child again. Like, I feel like a kid. I feel like... I was, uh, you know, me and my buddy were dropping acid on stage in my eighth grade graduation. I feel like that type of just kind of that innocent childlike life, you know? And what takes me back there is when I eat Magic Spoon cereal, it takes me back to when I had no cares in the world, you know, except drug dealers I owed money that had weapons. But I want people to truly try this cereal. Do it for me. If you don't want to do it for your own health, do it for me, right? Mm -hmm. Because... I knew a, a woman who was a big, big, big girl. She was a big girl. And they wanted her to lose weight, and she couldn't lose weight because she just kept eating uh, sugar. And then she ordered the Magic Spoon cereal. And do you know who that woman is today? Yeah. Melania Trump. Okay? So understand what I'm fucking saying here. Okay? You understand what I'm saying? Every Epstein girl was fed Magic Spoon cereal on the island. Every single one. And they said that's the one part of their experience that they don't regret. They said they'd go back there and take Alan, Winch, Alan Dershowitz's hog if they could get that cereal again. This is a fact. This is what they said. I'm reading court transcripts. Okay? Don't get mad at me. The Epstein victim said they would gladly suck off Alan Dershowitz in his old schlong again which was unwashed per them, if they could get a bowl of Magic Spoon cereal because that was what they uh, served everybody on the island because they didn't want them to crash. They didn't want the sugar to crash. Mm -hmm. So they wanted people to be perky and pepped up. Naturally, Magic Spoon cereal. It is the cereal, the official cereal of Little St. James. Magic Spoon cereal. Chislaine Maxwell has said, it's so good, I can't believe it has no fucking sugar. That's from the mouth of, that's from the mouth of, you know, the boss. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, go to magicspoon.com slash Tim Dillon if you want to eat the official cereal of Jeffrey Epstein's Island.
Do you understand me? Tim Dillon at free, free shipping. You get free shipping, dummy. You know how much it costs to ship that little St. James? They actually named Magic Spoon on Little St. James because there was a trick where someone took a spoon. All right, forget it, but Magic Spoon. <laughs> it's a joke. If anyone listening, please. Get fucking lawyers. Leave me alone. Magic Spoon. Go, go, go attack other people here, okay? We got other people. I'm making jokes. Got other people that need you to keep an eye on them in this town, not me. Magicspoon.com slash Tim Dillon. Use the code Tim Dillon for free shipping. And thanks to Magic Spoon for not only sponsoring us, but sponsoring Little St. James. Mm -hmm. And 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 uh the official cereal of Gislay Maxwell. Thank you. You know me. I've slept on fucking shitty mattresses. I slept on couches. I fucked my back up horribly. And I, and now I'm getting to the point where I say to myself, I need to treat myself right. So I got myself a Helix mattress. Okay, if you can't sleep because of today's politics or the pandemics or fireworks or your love life or any other drama that's going on out there right now, okay, you could easily, sleeping on a terrible mattress can ruin your life. Sleep is the most important thing in your life. It truly is. It's not family. It's sleep. You get sleep and you're happy. If you don't have sleep, you're, uh, you're, you're sleepy. So they have a quiz, Helix. Helix has a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete, matches your body type and sleep preferences to be the perfect mattress for you. Everybody's unique and Helix knows that. So they have several different mattress models to choose from. They have soft, medium, and firm. Mattress is great for cooling you off if you sleep hot. Even a Helix mattress for plus size folks. God help those people. I took the Helix quiz and was matched with a model mattress because I wanted something that felt Firm. I like firm. I sleep on my side. Maybe not. I don't even know. So if you're looking for a mattress, you take the quiz. You order the mattress that you're matched to. Let me tell you right now, this will change your life. If you decide to commit to actually sleeping the six to eight hours a night that you need to on a great mattress, you're going to change your life. You're happier, healthier. Your, your, your mind is clear. You don't have brain fog. Helixsleep.com slash Tim Dillon. Take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10-year warranty. You get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Listen to that. $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash Tim Dillon. This mattress is so good. Whatever Ponzi scheme you're involved in, whatever horrible, loveless marriage you're in, you're going to sleep like a baby. This mattress is so good that people outside breaking into your windows trying to kill you are not going to wake you up. You'll die in your sleep. It's so goddamn good. This mattress is so good that the world will burn around you and you will not so much as fucking roll over. It is a good mattress. It's for the moment. It is exactly for the moment. You will sleep through the dissolution of this country. You will sleep through the destruction of every meaningful institution that you hold dear. <laughs> you will sleep through the race riots and the horrible fucking nightmare economic collapse. You'll sleep through the rioting, the burning, the looting. You'll sleep through the pandemic and the COVID and the Great Depressions and recessions. You'll sleep through the bursting of the bubbles. You'll sleep through your wife leaving you. You'll sleep through your son or daughter turning on you and hating you. You'll sleep through your company leaving. You'll sleep through the missiles that are coming from China. Go to helixsleep.com slash Tim Dillon. Take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. But that's the update. God, man, I'm thinking about getting out of L.A. Don't know if I will or not, but, I mean, the, the thought always crosses my mind. Do I, do I end up on the west coast of Florida? Do I end up in Florida in some swamp? I don't know. Texas. I like Texas a lot, too. You know, New York has fallen. Uh, <laughs> people just call each other now. They're like, Soho has fallen. Oh, my God. <laughs> no 
like Tribeca is being occupied. I'm like, really? But yeah, I think I think I think the, the journey to LA may be coming to an end. You know, I mean, the clubs are closed. There's nothing really to do. Um, you know, everybody makes fun of the TikTok kids, but they really de- that's what LA is. You're supposed to be 20 and good looking and live in a house with a bunch of your friends and just fuck a bunch of people and make a lot of money, and then by 30, it's all uh, you know forgotten. It's all like a dream that happened, and then you just have some money and. You have a hot wife, you have some kids, you move down to Orange County and you get into Jesus and you go to Mosaic, the rocker church. Oh, yeah. And you're just like, Jesus, keep letting me make all this money. <laughs> That's what the Orange County Church Mosaic yeah, is. Yeah. Jesus, please keep me rich and powerful. Help my swing. Help my golf swing. My wife has new tits. Thank <laughs> you, Lord. <laughs> And they're all, they like dance around. It's all just rich white people dancing around. Mm. Like some of them are playing guitars. It's like, you know, Jesus is the first influencer type of church. Mm. Uh, but that that's the LA life. Like that's the LA life. And I'm never going to have that life. I'm never going to be 20 and hot and living in a cool house and being cool and then moving to Orange County with my, uh, you know, fake titted wife and then get, get going to like Mosaic Church and jumping around. And that's what, that's what LA is supposed to be or California in general. I just, that's not going to be for me. So, but I could live a Texas life. Like I could live that life and I could certainly live a Florida life. Those two states intrigue me. I like them. Texas, you don't have the state income tax. Um, Florida, you don't have the state income tax either. Florida, you do have Floridians. So that's a little bit of a, an issue, you know? Do I join the gypsies? Do I join the Roma? Do I join a traveling group of people? Who I respect, don't curse me. I don't know. These are these are all thoughts. I never thought this. You know, I moved to LA about a year ago permanently, and I got passed at the comedy store about a year ago, and then the entire world shut down and collapsed. My entire business changed. We've gone through like a decade of evolution in a few months. Everybody has become digital. Uh you know, that's why the Patreon's really cool because we can have a lot of fun on the Patreon. We get really wild on the Patreon. We're not worried about YouTube yanking us off. We're not worried about any of that. Uh, we get pretty wild here too and we have fun on this show. But like the Patreon is a great, and I think that's just if you want entertainment, now, if you want better entertainment, you're just going to have to find, find it. You're going to have to seek it out. You're not going to get it. Networks aren't going to give it to you. You're just going to have to seek it out. It's probably going to be behind a paywall. It's going to have to be. Because I'm going to be like, the people that are on my Patreon seek out my comedy. So if they're offended by something, then it's their fault. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like it's like if I go into Gucci to try to get jeans and they're like, we don't have a size 44. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's my fault. You don't go to Gucci. You go to DXL, the fat person store. I went to the fat person store the other day and the guy's like, do you ever work retail? I was like, no. Because I mentioned something about the fat store in Beverly Hills mm-hmm. and clothes. And he's like, he's like, we hated the people at the fat store in Beverly Hills. They're like, they used to send us all their rejects, like clothing wise, yeah, you know, to this other fat store. Like, what am I going to hear about this now? <laughs> I'm going to hear about a few to fat stores. This is the year 35 of my life. This is the year 35. I get to stand here and have this guy talk to me about the feud he's having with the other fat store in Beverly Hills. And I'm like, well, all the fat stores should stick together. But they don't. There's feuds. There's all kinds of problems. So what are you going to do, folks? You got to stay positive. Stay up. Stay positive. That's what I do. I just stay positive. And what works for me? Is it working out? Is it eating well? Is it religion? No. I like gypsies. (laughs) I like watching them and learning about them. That's what's doing it for me right now. It's not fucking avocado toast, and it's not a nine-mile run, but it is watching gypsies get married in a field. That is what makes me happy. I suggest you watch that show, My Big Fat Greek. No, My Big Fat Gypsy American Wedding, Mm -hmm. even though I want to watch the UK one as well because the UK one I think is very good uh, too. You know, again, I'm I'm not throwing shade. Marry your cousin. Do what you want to do. You know, they, they all seem to have a little bit of, uh, you know, that they're, that, that, that's, you know, prevalent, I think, in the community is that they are. They marry extended family and maybe, you know, 
and that's okay. And I mean, those dresses, they're wild. They're, they're, to me, they, they make me, they make me feel sick in a good way. Like when you first take shrooms, Yeah. like I'm like sick to my stomach, but in a happy way. I don't know why I'm like happy that that's happening. You know, I'm not knocking anybody, but because I am, I'm afraid they'll curse me. <laughs> I'm truly, I'm truly, I'm like literally terrified uh, that they will curse me and I will end up uh, overweight or something like that. I do not want that. Wouldn't it be great if this is just a curse? This whole COVID was just a gypsy curse. Oh, we're already cursed. We're yeah. already cursed. I don't know. Where should I live? Where should I go? You're allowed to submit suggestions to me, you know? Tell me where you think I should live. Where should I go? Where should we move this operation? Where should we go? I don't know. It's a good question. Maybe stay here. Maybe we'll stay in L.A. I'm trying to get, maybe maybe they'll let me in. Maybe the Hype House will let me in, the Sway House, the TikTok houses. Yeah. I don't know. It's just so, it's, 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 dude, that's when you should be. Like these 19 year old morons that are just driving around in Teslas, they have no idea. They have no clue. That's what LA is about. LA is about having no clue. It's a city you can really only enjoy if you don't have any clue. Sure. And you're just like, things go fast. Powder goes up nosy. That's it. Penis goes in hole. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you have any thoughts about anything, you got to get out of here. It's not a city of thoughts. It's not a city of thoughts. New York now, it's hard to have a thought because as you're having it, a bullet grazes your skull. <laughs> that is also a problem. Bill de Blasio really destroying that city. I mean, and, and by the way, none of this, none of this ignores the bungling of the corona, the incompetence, the government stealing, not giving people money. I mean, everyone could call this. They gave people $1,200. Nobody's getting unemployment anymore in a few weeks. That runs out. People are on the verge of it. You know, I mean, all of this, every, everything, my criticisms of like the Blasio or people like that, I always understand really the genesis of this issue, which is that we have people just too fucking greedy in this country and they're unwilling to compromise at all. And, and allow people to live dignified lives, which is what we need to do. People can be rich. People can own multiple homes. People, But you need to invest in, a, in an education and, and health care and have an inf infrastructure that allows people to live dignified lives. If you rob them of their dignity and you destroy that and they're, and they're, and they're selling homes and going bankrupt because they get sick, I mean, it's, it, it's in a moral system. And both Republicans and Democrats have participated in that for a long time in a moral system that I said on Twitter deserves to be burned down. The system. But when you start burning down like individual buildings, one owned by like an Indian woman who's like, what, what? You know, that's what she sounded like. It's, it's wrong and it doesn't help anything. And then what happens? Then a few weeks later, we have DHS agents uh, running around grabbing people off the street because that... I, I, I mean, do you not know where we live? Are you not? Are you unaware? Do you think these high school kids in Portland that are now starting this youth liberation front of Portland, I mean, do you really think those guys are going to be able to stand up against, I mean, the, the true power of the state? It just is not going to happen. And I don't understand why people think it's going to happen or that, it, or that we want to be ruled by high school students from Portland. Is that... I don't understand. People just keep defending the displays of clear violence. Where it's like they're going up to people and and starting and intimidating people and saying like "Say Black Lives Matter." And you got a group of people that are intimidating somebody. You're trying to get them to say something. You're under the threat of violence. What is that doing? What cause is that helping? Why are people defending that? Why is the media egging that on? Why is the media pretending that these two people who looked funny, they looked buffoonish, but walking out of their house with weapons and standing there whilst people walked by their home, why is the media pretending that those two people are like terrorists when they literally just walked on, to the front of their house with weapons? I don't understand. Was it an overreaction? Potentially. But it's their home and it's their weapons. 
Why is the media, you know, and then I think the weapon was confiscated. I think that guy's AK-47s yeah. were confiscated. Why are we cheering that on? I don't understand. Why are we cheering on people's inability to defend themselves? Do you think the people in the street are always going to agree with you? Do you believe that? Do you really believe that? Do When you sleep uh, at night in your bed, when your head hits the pillow, uh, do you think that the people in the street are always going to have your back and that you would never need to defend yourself? You think the government on the other side, you think the government's always going to have your back? You think any institution in America is going to have your back? None of them. Truly, every major institution in this country does not care about you, and they will let you die. Fact. So anybody ridiculing anybody's uh, means of how they protect themselves or self-defense is crazy. Anybody ridiculing anybody... Uh, the, you know, it just makes no sense to me. Every major institution in this country, from the government to the media to the police, everybody is not focused on your rights as a citizen. They're all in some larger battle against something else, some larger ideological war, and you as a citizen, as an individual, don't matter, and they'll let you die. They'll let you die. Trust me. On either side. Everywhere. Cops are going to let you die to make a point about rising crime. People in the street may kill you to make a point that they, they need to use violence to get what they want. Government may kill you just because that's what the government does. The media may publish your address and have people dox you. They may put out a false narrative about you that goes around the world. Before you're able to defend yourself, you may lose your job, you may lose your family, you may lose your career, you may lose your, the place you live in, and the media will not give a fuck. They'll move on. But none of those institutions care about you as an individual, what your rights are as a citizen. It's true. It's a fact. Your friends may care, your family may care, care about yourself, but none of those institutions, they're all corrupt, all of them, and none of them have any focus on your life as an individual and your family and your ability to work and live and, and worship or whatever you want to do. And so the idea is when you start ridiculing people who have the means to defend themselves from any of the above mentioned, you know, power factions, when you start ridiculing those people I mean, man, you must have some faith. You must have a lot of faith in these systems. I don't. You must have a lot of faith. If you're sitting there, if you're a type of person who's not thought about even maybe getting a gun over the last three or four months, good for you. But also, that's a lot of faith. It's a lot of faith. You know? You know, and if you're a person who thinks that the state cares about you, or that Trump cares about you, or that Trump gives a fuck about you. Right now, when all he tweets is law and order as the cities burn, and he tweets law and order, mm -hmm. you think that guy cares? Good for you. But I would fucking, you know, it's time to start really understanding that like a lot of what we've been talking about for the last couple of years, or a lot of what very smart people have been telling you was going to happen is happening. It's not a drill, not a fire drill where the alarm's pulled and everybody goes, stands in a parking lot and everybody goes back. This is not a drill. This is the disintegration of society in front of your eyes. And it will be probably the introduction into a dystopian uh, surveillance state, police state that we will live in. And it might take us a few years of chaos to eventually arrive at that point, which may be the plan, but this is the beginning of that. Seeing writers leave newspapers and magazines is, it doesn't mean anything to any of us, but, but make no mistake. It's the beginning. It's the beginning of an Orwellian nightmarish control system that they're going to put in where you're ridiculed for speaking and you're ridiculed for having the temerity to defend yourself or even brandishing a weapon and saying, yeah, I have the ability to defend myself. 
the idea that, that you would be uh, ridiculed for that. I mean, you could be made fun of. I tweeted the picture out. I said when DoorDash, I tweeted the picture. I was like, when DoorDash is fucking around, they were standing there. Yeah. It was funny, you know? But the idea that people are cheering on the, their, the confiscating of their weapons, which I believe were legally owned, and the idea that people are cheering that on, again, it's just, I don't know what you think is coming. I really don't. I'm unaware of what you think is coming because the adults in America have, have like, left. It's really, it's just the case. I mean, imagine a high school party. The adults are gone. Everybody is running fucking wild. People are falling through tables. There's broken glass. People are trying to sweep things up. There's fights breaking out. People are trying to figure out who did what. The kid who owns the house is ODing in the bathtub. He's throwing up. People are trying to lift his head up. Nobody who knows who that kid even is. Everybody's trying to find him. It's an absolute fucking nightmare, you know? You're kind of having fun because the party's still kind of fun. You know, the party's still kind of fun, even though things are getting out of control quickly, and then the cops come in and shut the party down. I mean, we're, we're at that party. We're at that party now. Okay? And, and the kid who owns the house is tweeting out law and order as the house is burning and as the vases are smashing and as people that we don't know are just coming in the house and fucking your little sister and he's locked in the bathroom tweeting law and order. It's not a good look. And I don't know what comes next. But I'll tell you where I'm going to be. With Roma.